Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting will please come to order. Adequate notice of this meeting was provided in the following ways. Notice published in the Courier News. Notice posted on the Bolton Board of the Municipal Building. Notice made available to the Township Clerk. Notice sent to the Courier News and the Star Ledger. Will the Clerk please call the roll? Mr. Weissman? Here. Mr. Tillery? Here. Mr. Patel? Here. Mr. Reggio? Here. Mr. Blount? Mr. Hidaka? Here. Mr. Mitterando? Here. Mr. Ali? Here. And Chairman Cahill? Here. Will everyone please stand for a salute to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Keneally, are there any changes to tonight's agenda? I'm not aware of any changes to tonight's agenda. Oh, good. Thank you, sir. Let's proceed to item number 522-ZB-06V, Kendra Bryant Morrow. Yes, hello. Hello, ma'am. Uh, I need to swear you in. Could you raise your right hand? You swear the testimony you're about to give should be the truth. I do. Thank you. Uh, your name and address, please. I'm sorry. Your oh, name one and address, two, please. Kendra Bryant Morrow, 123 Netherwood Avenue, Piscataway, 08854. Thank you. Could you explain to the board what you're looking to do here? I'm looking to um, turn my garage into living space and install a shed in my backyard. Mr. Chairman, you may want to talk to Mr. Hennerstein. About yes, that. Henry, I was wondering if you had any comments about this application. You're muted. Can't hear you, Henry. There he goes. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, the, the, issue, the issue with this application, according to the zoning officer's report, is that the existing home is already um, in a coverage variants. So uh, the proposed conversion, although doesn't necessarily add any more coverage, the proposal of the shed increases the coverage by um, an additional, I believe almost 1.6%. Uh, so again, the problem here is that the, the coverage um, on the property that exists already is um, quite a bit over what's allowed. Uh, and then when you add the shed, you're even going substantially over uh, the existing amount. So um, my concern is that with the shed, we're gonna be you know, over 25%, which again, uh, from past experiences, this board I think uh, very rarely likes to go uh, even into the 23% range on coverage. In this particular case, the existing home is already at 23.4%. Uh, um, so, I mean, is there any way you could live without the shed? I mean, the shed really the issue. It's not the fact that you want to, uh, or that I see the fact that you're trying to convert the, the space in the garage, but then you're eliminating all that storage space and trying to put it in, in another structure on the property. There lies the problem. So... You know, if join there, the meeting. If there's a way you could perhaps look at an alternative, perhaps keeping the garage for storage, perhaps you put a second story uh, addition over the garage or over a different portion of the home, um, or only convert a portion of the garage so that you have you maintain some storage area in the existing footprint of the house uh, without having the need for additional structures on the property. Uh, that's the issue is this the, really it's it's the coverage issue that's the biggest concern that you're going to be going well over 25 percent of your property in coverage according to the uh, zoning officer um, then the only other item on here is the fact that you put up a fence in the township right of way um, there's a need for a variance for any solid fence that goes within the front yard setback. And because you have a corner property, you have two front yard setbacks. So that fence was put up without a permit. If you would have 
applied for with a permit, you would have been told that you can't put the fence in that location. So I don't see an issue uh, due to the nature of the, the property location, the fence being you know up to the right of way line, but we can't allow a fence to be in the township right of way. Uh, so that would have to get relocated outside the right of way. And then we can give a variance for that location, considering that the street really only services you and your neighbor. Um, so that fence issue, I, I would imagine that you, you, you know, you could you could live with. But again, the bigger problem is the uh, the coverage variance um, that you have on the property. Um, we need the garage to be converted to living space. So would so are you saying we cannot get the extra 1.4%? It's a it's a rear yard. It's not um, inconveniencing anyone. We back to commercial property. I'm mute. 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 Yeah. The, the problem is the problem is is that the um, the ordinance only allows for 20%. And again, I mean the the towns given variances in the past um, that, you know, are reasonable. And then the township size, you know, that usually is around that 23% threshold that they'll sometimes let it go over. I mean, it depends on the size of the lot. This is a standard conforming lot. So um, again, 23% is pretty fair. It's an additional 300 square feet. Your home is already 23.4. So to allow it to go even beyond that, like I said, it gets it up to over 20, it gets right at 25%, which the town and my experience in the past, the board has really granted. And I don't think I've ever made a recommendation for coverage variance that, that quite that high, but it, ultimately it's up to the board and, and, um, and, and their feeling on that, um, you know, uh, but as as far as I think the township's suggestion would be, or my suggestion would be, is you know to try to come up with an alternative. Uh, like I said, whether the addition be second story addition, you could keep the garage. Um, whether you know maybe you put an addition on the second story for storage, or uh, maybe you don't convert the entire garage. I mean that's really for you to decide. I just don't think. Um, or, or, you know, maybe come up with a much more uh, reasonable size shed, you know, something that's, you know, eight by eight, I think uh, something like that might be something the board might be able to consider. Um, so the shed is the issue, the size of the shed. Yes, because that, a, any additional structure you put on that property is bringing your coverage up over the existing amount, which is already in a variant situation. So that's the biggest uh, the biggest concern. So the that. existing the existing home is was built with a variance. Correct. I assume it was. I, I, I yeah. I assume it was. I assume it was built with a. Uh, with the variance because it doesn't comply with the ordinance now. Okay. Well, we are not able to afford to put a second story on our home. I'm, I'm sure you can understand that. Um, and we did need the um, storage. Um, and you're saying the 1.6% or 2% is not acceptable or has not been acceptable in the past. Correct. I mean, uh, you may want to hear from some of the board members on what their feeling is, but uh, my recommendation is is typically to keep the coverage variances um, closer to the, or below 23%. Again, you're already, before we even start, you're at 23.4. So any any shed type structure that you put on the property here, you keep creeping up. So. Um, you know, perhaps it's, like I said, you could come up with a smaller shed and, um, you, you know, or, or limit the size of the conversion. So you, maybe you could have some storage inside that area and the smaller shed or something, 
you know, to that nature. Uh, I can't tell you exactly what to do. It's up to you uh, to sort of maybe brainstorm or go back and, and take a look at it. Or if you could do it on the fly, that's up to you. Nobody's. Uh, well, I know that um, the conversion of the garage into living space is a necessity for my family. Um, so that would not be something I would like to change. I cannot afford to put a second story on my home for additional storage. Um, my, so what I'm understanding is the house that I live in, I can never put any other additional anything on the property. I can, I can just put a eight by 10 or whatever, what have you shed. Yeah, I think, you know, I think even that's pushing it a little bit, but, you know, uh, I think it'd be a much better solution than the, you know, 20 by eight or 20 by 10 shed, or 20 by eight shed that's proposed. So again, I mean, you just got to look at the numbers and the fact that they don't like going over 23 at 23.4. So whatever you could do to stay as close as possible to your existing condition I think is what's going to be looked upon favorably. So, you know, I think the board's going to, you know, have some, you know, some sympathy for your situation that you can't, you know, go with any other kind of, uh, you know, a conversion, but, you know, they also have to abide by the ordinance as well. So uh, you have to decide what's more important, if it's conversion, conversion of the garage, versus the storage, um, you may not be able to do both um, or you're gonna have to pair it back, I think, um, to an acceptable amount after maybe hearing from the board. Ms. Morrow? Hey there. Hi, how are you? Okay. Okay, we just just let me put it in layman's terms. Um, the code calls for 20% coverage. You're at 23.4 according to Henry, <clears throat> which is extreme. We, we rarely ever accept that, except in, like I said, rare circumstances. We're not prepared to go any higher than that footprint right now. What I would suggest is a good compromise, and that is the eight by 10. You already said that you have to have that living space. Yes, sir. We do. It has to be converted. I'm assuming it's a family member or- My, my so mother, we need her with us. That, that's and fully acceptable. My heart goes out to you, and God bless you for taking care of family. I think a good compromise on your behalf and on the boards would be for you to put a smaller shed out there Put the necessities that are in the garage, put that there. I mean, if there's anything that can stand the weather, leave that outside, cover it with a tarp or something else. But the priority is obviously to get your mom into that new living quarters. Yes. And get whatever's in the garage out into a smaller shed. We we wouldn't approve an eight by 20 um, structure of that size for the most part, uh, even on a okay. uh, consenting lot. So. Uh, I, I don't speak for the whole board. I, I, I will ask others' opinions, but I think that that is a, a real good compromise. And I, I, I hope that that's something that we can both uh, come to terms with. Um, we would have to get a smaller shed. If you tell us the dimensions, then that's what we have to do. But the priority is to move forward with the garage conversion, because Understood. like I said, this has been a while and we need her here. Understood, understood. Um, Henry, um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but eight by 10 would be something that we could live with. I, mean, yeah, it's, it's, I, think, I think under the circumstances, I think eight by 10 is half of what the original proposal was. So I think it's a compromise, uh, you know, um, eight good. by eight would be better, but I think, you know, you know, another additional 0.2% at this point it would be okay. I um, think. Considering the situation. So I think 10 by eight is okay. Uh, I, my suggestion would be, though, is it, it really has to be three feet from the property line, uh, which is the ordinance as far as the rear property line. And it has to be what's on that concrete pad. Um, it's empty. OK, um, if, if the front of the shed could at least match the front of the garage. And, and since this is a smaller shed now, I'm hoping that you could fit the 10 foot by 8 foot shed three feet from the rear property line. And. Um, and, and keep it even with the, the garage structure so that it's not further out into the road, into BD. Uh, even though that's not the biggest concern because again, again, it is sort of a dead end street there that doesn't impact a lot, but just do your best to keep it 
as close as possible to, to match that garage uh, facade so it's straight across. And then my only, any, I would imagine you could you have the ability to park two cars on the driveway? Yes, I do. Okay, so then that would meet the requirement for the uh, the parking requirement for a residential home of this size. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then the other condition would be that the fence has, has to be relocated uh, outside the right of way. So okay. we could get the variance for the uh, six foot solid fence to be uh, up to the right of way line, Jim, um, just it cannot be in the right of way uh, uh, in that area uh, along Beatty Street uh, to the north of the garage. Or and, and if they go with an eight by 10 shed, do we have a number for the coverage? Yes, the, the number would be 24.2. Thank you. Can we give Ms. Morrow a um, time frame as to the relocation of the fence? So not to put so much stress on her between renovating the garage and moving the fence? Uh, the problem is the fence is illegal. Uh, okay. Um, so it's, it's, that's, that's a little bit of a problem. Um, really, violations need to get corrected before permits are typically issued. Um, that, that's the only that's okay. the only problem. I mean, I can, really, there's no leeway on that. It's not like we're requesting, um, you know, paved driveway here or something of that nature. Uh, the sidewalk's, you know, in a sort of in a violation state right now, so... Uh, that okay. would have to get corrected, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, I, I tried, Ms. Morrow. I apologize. So, Ms. No. Morrow, what he's saying is that the fence would have to be relocated before you can get your building permits to convert the garage to living space. Okay. So, we need to move the, the fence back three feet, two feet? It's yeah. 10, feet, 10 feet from the face. The fence has to be 10 feet from the face of the curb. That's the right of way. So, your property line starts 10 feet in from the face of the curb. Just to Tomorrow, you can always check bigger. with our, you can check with our, our office. Okay, so we need to bring the, I understand what you're saying. You need, we need to bring the fence in to three, um, okay, to 10 to, feet. To the, yeah, to the property line. Okay. Okay. Does any other members of the board have any questions for this applicant? Hearing none, I'm going to open it to the public. Anyone in the public portion have any questions for this per application or applicant? Or comments. Or comments. Uh, Ms. Buckley? I, I'm on. Uh, oh, go ahead. Someone's not muted. That's all I know. Yeah, I have no idea. Anyone with their hand up? I think it was me. I think it was me. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's he's yelling from my bottom corner. He didn't raise his hand. Okay, go ahead. Uh, hey, sir, can I have your name and address, please? Uh, Mark Sanfrone, 201 Netherwood. Could you spell your last name, please? C-I-A-N-F-R-O-N-E. Thank you. Could you raise your right hand? Could you put the testimony about the gift should be true? Yes. Thank you. Go ahead with your question or comment. Uh, my, my comment is I'm, I'm uh, Ms. Morrow's um, direct... Our, our front doors basically face each other. Um, and Tim and Kendra are wonderful neighbors. Um, and and I, I can't say that any of this is going to be, because I'm going to be the one that's going to be looking at the shed. And uh, absolutely no problem with this. They keep very good shape of their property. Um, they're excellent neighbors. So um, if it helps at all, um, you know, whatever we can approve them for absolutely go right ahead and do so at least that's my my uh recommendation on it i have a lot more issues with what's in back of our houses that kendra and i have shared along with other neighbors that are that we face our centennial avenue neighbors that are far bigger issues and nightmares than this small shed that they're requesting so uh by all means i would two thumbs up to whatever they're requesting Understood. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time out to come in and uh, share that with us. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Buckley, anyone else? No, sir. Seeing none, let's close the public portion. I'm going to make a motion to approve this application with the uh, limitations that Henry and Jim are going to tell us about besides the, um, the size of the shed and moving up the fence. Can I get a second? I'll, I'll second. second. 
I'll finish, I guess. With compassion. Mr. Weissman? Uh, he's recused himself. Oh. I Remember? Missed. No. Sorry, I thought I told you. Sorry. That's okay. Mr. Tillery? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Mr. Reggio? Yes. Mr. Hidaka? Yes. Mr. Mitterando? Bill, you're muted. Mr. Mitterando? <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Ali? Yes. And Chairman Cahill? Yes. You've been granted an approval uh, amended, a little, a little different than what you asked for. Um, we will memorialize this in a written document at our next meeting. You don't need to be present for that. We'll mail that document to you and you'll need that to get your permits. Okay, in the meantime, um, how do I find out exactly where the fence needs to go? Do I call the office or does someone come out? Because I want to do this, like, you know, you understand the gravity. Um, I need to do this. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can stop. You can stop in the office. Uh, actually, call us during the day, and either myself or the zoning officer can help you with that. Just well, let Henry, she, she is, Henry, she is going to need a permit. So yeah, you have to fill out a zoning. Yeah, drop permit. the permit need, off with the survey, and we can help you. Out. You need the survey to just show where the fence is going to be relocated to. Like I said, it's the property line, so that's the line that's on your survey um, along Beatty Street. So uh, right now, it's really uh, I think a foot or two behind the curb. So again, typically the property line is 10 feet from the face of the curb. So which coincides with the property line. So, but you can contact us during, during the day and uh, we'll help you with that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Good luck, Ms. Morrill. Thank you very much. Okay, take care. Uh, let's move on to item number six, 21-ZB-80V, Alka Trivastava. Is the applicant present? Yes, yes. Are you both going to be testifying tonight? Yes, we both will be. Okay, I need to swear both of you in. Could you each raise your right hand? Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give should be the truth? Yes. yes. One at a time, please give us your name and address. Rajiv Singh, 5 Marissa Court, Piscataway, New Jersey. Alka Shurasta, 5 Marissa Court, Piscataway, New Jersey. Thank you. Could one of you explain to the board what you'd like to do here? Um, we are um, removing an existing deck and replacing it with a, a deck, which is like 15, uh, 25 by uh, 16. 16 by uh, 25 feet. Okay. Actually, I have, a, um, so we, we are replacing existing deck with this size. And are you also uh, proposing a, a roof over approximately half of the new deck? Yes, yes. yes. And I, I see some correspondence in which you indicate that you will not be enclosing uh, the roofed area of the deck. Yes, yes, yes that's correct. Uh, uh, Mr. Henry, Chairman, you may want to talk to Mr. Hinderstein about this. Yes, Henry, you have any uh, uh, comments about this? Um, yes, uh, again, I don't know if everyone recalls, but this is the second time this applicant's before us. They came before us uh, previously, I believe it was last month. Um, the problem is the 50 yard setback requirement for the house is right where the house is. Um, so anything that they do beyond the rear portion of the house is a requires a variance. Okay. Uh, they've come back to the board one other time. Uh, they received a sunroom a variance to put a decent sized sunroom across the back of the house. And then now they're they're asking for a, a deck that was, you know, quite substantial. Um, I think the last time they were here, uh, I, 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 we, I tried to convey to them that, you know, uh, the covered deck along with the sunroom and everything was just too much structure uh, within that area. I think the suggestion, there was some suggestions that were given to them um, that the, um, the, the covered deck be, I think, reduced in size, um, considering, again, all the, the sunroom and, and what the requirement is uh, of having a 30-foot uh, rear yard setback. So, I mean, that's where we are. It doesn't sound like the proposal's been amended at all. So, um, 
it doesn't sound like anything was was changed unless I'm mistaken. Uh, has anything from the previous application when you were here the last time, have you modified it at all? So the size, the deck, no, we have not modified that. So um, we, we played with the various things that we wanted to place in that area. And we have prepared a small, um, like a picture or a schematic of that. May I share it? Again, but what you're not understanding is there's an ordinance. It requires 30 foot setback. Um, you already have a sunroom that is approximately, um, I think 16.9 or, uh, or 17.9. 17.9. 17. Um, yes. I don't know if that was accurate or not. I know the first time that the plan was submitted, it was, wasn't, maybe this was, it looks like it was revised. So, yeah. um, again, I mean, you have to show us a hardship. The hardship is not that you bought stuff and now you need a place to put it. That's not a hardship. Um, you know, a hardship would be, you know, you live on a corner property or you got, you know, a, a tremendous size lot here with ample room on the sides of your property, both sides of the property. Um, and you're trying to just put, I understand everything because that's what you want in the back, but it just doesn't work, I think, with the with the setback, um, we've given the, the sunroom, again, and my opinion is that the deck should be either paired back to match the, the size of the, you know, the setback of the sunroom. Um, the, the, the roof over the deck, I don't think is necessarily needed when you have the sunroom um, or, or convert it to a patio. There's no ordinance that says that you can't have a patio on the ground or you know, 18 inches off the ground, um, the same, this size. And then that doesn't require any, any variance because it's a patio versus a deck. So uh, you haven't come back with, I think, uh, any options or, or uh, you know, choices here that I think would lend the, the board uh, to make a, a, different, a different opinion from the previous one, but I'll leave that up to the board. Okay, now, now, let me just jump in here. Uh, when you were here last month, um, the board obviously was not in a position to accept your application and recommended changes. We adjourned the matter to allow you to make changes, and you have now returned to the board with the same application. If you would like the board to vote on this application as it stands, we will do so. Um, um, so we wanted to show the location of our property. And uh, in the sense like where we are sitting and how does it fit in into the big picture of our community? And um, and also we already have a patio and we are not able to use it and that's the reason why. Uh, and also we provided explanation for why it cannot go on the side. So those are the things that we addressed in the, um, the questions that were raised at the last meeting is what we have addressed in the um, documentation that was submitted as follow-on material. Uh, Laura, was that uh, documentation submitted to the board members? Laura, you're muted. Sorry, yes, it was emailed to everyone. Okay. I only had so one copy, so I emailed it to everyone. The board members have all of the documentation that you submitted. If you would like to explain some of it, uh, feel free to do so. Yeah, let me uh, let me share uh, my screen. Next. Next. So, so yeah, this we already know that we are changing from a deck of eight by 10 to 16 by 25. And um, so, um, so this is, this is the location of our property. So we are right here and uh, this is, this is the, the backyard and it's all wooded area. And the only thing that we have is a railway track, which is about 400 feet from our house. Um, and there is, there is quite a bit of space between the houses. Um, so, um, so the structure that we are trying to build is somewhere here. 
Um, and at, uh, this is a schematic of, uh, this is the existing sunroom and this is 17.9 feet from the border of our property. And this is the new structure that we are trying to build. Uh, this will be uh, 14 feet from the edge of the property, from the boundary line. Um, initially, we thought that we could, given that our property has a space on the sides, <laughs> we, we could not build something on the side because uh, this, this place is our, uh, like we already have a room here and this is sunroom. And this part of the sunroom, uh, the way it is built, we talked to the person who built this deck. They said that they cannot replace this thing and create a door here because it's a prefabricated structure. Um, and if we want to build on the other side, uh, on the garage side, that will be too far from our house. And it will be a patio, it won't really be a deck. Right, right. So it will be a mm -hmm. patio in that. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so this is the structure we're trying to, but basically we're trying to fit like about a little bit of furniture, uh, sitting space to accommodate 15 to 16 people and leave enough moving air, like a area to move around. So this is the stairs that goes down. And uh, this is like, just gives a basic idea of what we are trying to lay here. Um, yeah, I think we covered this. Yeah, this mm -hmm. we covered. Um, we have provided the dimensions of everything and uh, based on the previous feedback, we tried to go back and look at the, how we plan to use it and uh, uh, how the diff, uh, a smaller size would work and things were not fitting in. And that's the explanation we have provided. And uh, so, yeah, so we, we have, this is an existing uh, patio that we have. And the issue is that uh, our parents, like if we are having like some get together here, like people have to go up and down. Uh, that is why uh, we considered making a deck uh, in this area. And when our parents come, you know, um, and like my mom is also here right now, um, like going up and down the stairs is difficult, you know, because of knee problems. And uh, <clears throat> and the other thing is, you know, because uh, uh, we want like a closer access to kitchen, it's easier to have um, at the same level um, uh, as opposed to going up and down. And like, we have not been able to use the patio effectively. And as we said uh, previous last time also, like we have thought about this for one year almost. And uh, last time also based on the feedback, we went back and evaluated everything that was suggested. It looks like you evaluated, but you didn't change anything. That's the only problem. I mean, yeah. I, uh, as a homeowner, I want what I want too, but there are certain guidelines and rules that we have to live by. And we just can't arbitrarily rubber stamp when someone just wants up to improve their home. There's there's guidelines and codes and whatnot that we need to follow. So, um, I, Jim, can we give him one more chance to try and come up with something else or, or do we have- to If the board tonight? would like to continue the matter uh, to allow them to uh, amend their application, you can certainly do that. Uh, and if the applicants want to vote on this current uh, proposal, uh, we can certainly do that too. But I, I think the applicants would not be happy with the outcome. I, I, I agree. I agree. If, if the board votes tonight, you will not get the outcome that you uh, uh, would like to have. Uh, we're willing at this point to work with you and give you an, another opportunity to go back and compromise with the numbers that Henry can offer you or, or that you feel are comfortable. But um, I don't think if we vote on this thing tonight, um, it'll be favorable to you. So we're willing to give you an opportunity to go back again bite the bullet, you know, to make some real changes and um, not just an explanation of what you would like and why you would like it. And I, I realize it's tough, but we just can't arbitrarily approve um, people, uh, you know, trying to improve their homes when uh, they're in violation of code. So given, given the location of the property and nobody in the, in the back of our property, and the neighbor who owns the property in the back. Um, They're it, also here right yeah, now. And I'm so, just saying, we, the, the board doesn't want to set a precedent. And, and, and let me let me jump in, Mr. Chairman. There, there are certain legal proofs that are required to grant a variance. You have not provided any of those proofs 
to support the granting of a variance. Your testimony has been that you want this because it fits your family's needs. Those are not proofs that are acceptable to the board. Okay. If you want us to vote on it tonight, we'll vote. If other, otherwise, I would suggest strongly that you regroup, go back and, um, and you know, cut the fat a little bit and we can revisit this, you know, in a month or so. Hopefully with some, you know, real changes. Okay. And um, uh, we have like our neighbors, like uh, who are there to support us today. So we, like, just to see that they are okay with what we are proposing and they support you. Know. So would their testimony be? Um, it wouldn't make, it would fall on deaf ears to be honest with you. Well, good neighbors are great to have and I'm glad you have them, but it, the, the good neighbors saying they're okay with it doesn't mean that the township is okay with it. So given special, um, I guess, circumstances that we have in the back that has no bearing on the, um, the approval process. I can't give you legal advice. Uh, I recommend that you talk to a lawyer and find out what legal proofs are necessary so that okay. you could provide those legal proofs. You have not done so. Okay. You want us to postpone? Uh, yes. Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. April 14th. April 14th, okay. Yes. Good. Okay, so this matter is going to be carried to April 14th with no further notice by the applicant. The only notice you're receiving is my announcement here tonight. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's move on to item number seven, 22-ZB-02V, Mario and Viviana Ojeda. Thank you. Mr. Arch represents them. Yes, thank you, uh, members of the board um, and uh, uh, township professionals. My name is uh, Tim Arch. Uh, I'm an attorney licensed in the state of New Jersey, uh, and I'm here representing uh, the Ojeda family. Uh, this is um, 147 Montgomery Street, Block 1910, Lot 23.01 in the R7.5 zone. A um, couple housekeeping matters. Um, I would ask... Um, uh, the board attorney if uh, notice was properly provided and if we are properly uh, 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 have proper jurisdiction before the board notice was proper and the board has jurisdiction to proceed thank you um, I will also note that I am in receipt of uh, three reports uh, Miss Corcoran's um, uh, zoning report indicating the variance is required um, I have a uh, February 14th, 2022 DPW report, and I have a memorandum from Mr. Hinterstein dated March 8th, uh, 2022. I believe those are the only reports, and I would just ask to confirm that those are the only reports. I see Laura shaking her head. Sorry, yes. I, mean, I, was, yes. I was muted. Yes. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> um, I want to give you a brief uh, introduction. I'm here representing uh, the Ojeda family. Um, the Ojedas are here with us today. They are uh, they are on the Zoom. If they can just wave real quick so everybody can see them. Um, the Ojedas are a lovely family. It's uh, uh, Mario and his wife, uh, Viviana. They have two uh, uh, wonderful children. Um, their son goes to Rutgers University. Um, uh, when I asked uh, them, uh, essentially what we're, we're talking about tonight is we're talking about building their dream home here in Piscataway. And when I asked them why Piscataway, uh, the answer uh, that Mr. Uh, Ojeda gave to me is that he, uh, he's driven through here multiple times over for years. Uh, and every time he sees Piscataway, he sees it as a, a, a beautiful, safe, wonderful community. And uh, they've been thinking for a very long time about uh, moving here and being part of that wonderful community. Um, so, uh, so that's what we're talking about tonight. Um, is building their house. Um, now, I have one uh, witness tonight, and that's Mr. Anthony Garrett. Um, he is uh, our architect and our planner. Um, we are asking for, we have two existing nonconformities uh, on the lot, uh, and we're asking for two variances in addition to that. Um, you will see uh, in Mr. Garrett's testimony, uh, um, it's a very unique shaped lot. It's a two frontage lot. It's essentially L-shaped. Uh, and so it fronts on both Montgomery and on Evans. Um, and so uh, I'm, I'm assuming at some point in the past, it was, it was either two or three uh, very uh, small lots that had been consolidated into this, uh, into this unique shaped lot. 
Um, so that that uh, explains the two nonconformities, and those would be uh, that we have a 30.66 foot lot width and a 30.66 foot lot frontage, and that's along Evans. Um, the two variances that we're requesting tonight, um, one is for uh, maximum building coverage, uh, where obviously you 20 uh, percent is the is the magic number for the town. Um, we are uh, proposing and requesting 21.9 percent building coverage, which I'll note on the outset is certainly below 23 um, percent. The other that we are asking for is. Um, uh, a rear yard setback uh, where 25 is uh, is allowed, and we are asking for an eight foot rear yard setback. And I know that immediately you're going to hear that that disparity in numbers, and you're going to say that seems like a really big ask. Um, but when you see the uh, how the the house is oriented on the lot, and because of the double frontages, um, what is technically considered a rear yard. Um, is really more is really essentially the side yard of the home, uh, and so it's really uh, it's really more related to a side yard setback than it is a rear yard setback. Um, so just so that you're not completely shocked by those numbers, uh, but again, when you see the uh, uh, the shape of the uh, of the parcel, um, I think you'll understand what we're talking about. Um, so with, uh, without any more ado, I will uh, ask that uh, Mr. Garrett um, uh, be uh, called up and. Uh, and sworn in uh, to give testimony. Mr. Garrett, can you raise your right hand? Do you swear that testimony you're about to give should be the truth? Yes, I do. Your name and address, please. Anthony Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T. -T. Business address is Billow Garrett Group, 161 Main Street, Ridgefield Park, New Jersey, 07660. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Garrett, uh, uh, you've never testified in front of uh, Piscataway's uh, zoning board before, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, can you give us uh, some of the, uh, uh, can you give us the benefit of your credentials then, please? Sure. Uh, I was originally licensed uh, as an architect in 1991 um, in New York State, subsequently licensed as an architect in New Jersey in 1996. Uh, and I obtained my planner's license because I will be testifying as both an architect and a planner in 1999 by exam. Um, I graduated Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in 1984. Uh, and I have uh, testified um, as an, and been accepted as an architect uh, before planning and zoning boards um, across the state from as far south as Egg Harbor to as far north as Byron and Rockley. I'm satisfied with his credentials. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Um, so Mr. Garrett, uh, you have um, uh, had an opportunity to uh, examine the site. Uh, you've prepared the, uh, the submissions uh, that we submitted to the board for this application. You are familiar uh, with, the, uh, with the site plan and the design, is that correct? That is correct. Um, if you can then please, if you can just uh, uh, take us through um, the, uh, take us through your, uh, 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 your professional opinion, your process, sure. your professional opinion, please. Okay. Uh, do I have the ability to share the screen? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Okay, great. And uh, we will start. Okay, let's get that up here. Uh, can everyone see a site plan or a sheet with a site plan that's been yes. rendered in green? Great. Yes. We're off to a good start. <laughs> um, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, and Mr. Garrett, if I could just stop you right here, is this uh, is this something that was previously provided as part of our application submission? This has been in. This is not. We enhanced this by adding color to the site plan to show the green space versus the house versus the driveway and patio. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Arch, we're going to need to mark this as A one with today's date, and ask Mr. Garrett to provide a paper copy to the board for its file. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's just start, I guess, with uh, some general description of the, uh, of the, of the project. Uh, the subject site is located in an R7.5 residential zone. Uh, the the in neighborhood is uh, essentially um, single family residences with the exception of the one property to the north of ours, which has a group care home on it. But other than that, it's uh, mostly mostly or almost entirely single family residences. Uh, our minimum lot size is uh, 7,500 square feet. Uh, our, the subject parcel, which is this L shape or 
Um, you know, it's not a flag lot, but it looks like a flag. Uh, it's a double fronted lot uh, that um, is a total of 8,063 square feet. The allow uh, the minimum requirement is 7,500 square feet in this zone. Um, it has frontage on Montgomery Street and it has frontage on Evans Avenue. Uh, the frontage on Evans Avenue, uh, we were advised by the professionals that that would be considered the front yard uh, and that is 30 feet uh, in width, uh, although it's I think important to note that uh, the Montgomery Street frontage is actually 50 feet. Uh, and in a strange way, if you added the two together, it's uh, actually over 75 feet, which is the required lot frontage in the in the neighborhood. Nonetheless, um, we have noticed uh, for these existing nonconformities as vari C variances. Uh, these parcels have existed this way since 1926. Uh, we went back in the records and found that uh, since that date, that's what has been shown on the tax map. So it's an interesting shaped property. And quite frankly, the 30 foot width along Evans Aven Avenue is very difficult to design as the front of the dwelling. Uh, and the address is known as 147 Montgomery Street. So we've treated Montgomery Street as the front of the dwelling. Um, we have a, a driveway coming in off of Montgomery Street, a uh, 20 foot wide driveway, which um, accesses a garage. Uh, the building setback uh, along Montgomery Street is 25 feet. Uh, that is what's required for front yard and it's well in excess of what's required for the side yards. Uh, we're proposing a dwelling uh, that is um, oriented really in that, um, that portion of the property, that 50 foot by 150 foot area um, that is, uh, has most of its frontage along Montgomery Street. We're proposing a two and a half story colonial style dwelling. And uh, we will get into the architectural issue uh, descriptions momentarily. I would mention that um, we surveyed uh, as part of our process, we visited the neighborhood, we walked around, looked at the environs and uh, came up with this design. Um, we didn't do it in the, uh, in, in the, the remote though. Uh, we've had numerous meetings with the Ojeda's. They've been very involved in this. Uh, as Mr. Arch stated, this is their dream house. Uh, they really, really want to move to Piscataway and stay here for a very long time. This is not a developer trying to uh, max out a property so we can sell it for profit. Um, you'll see when we get to the architectural design that the, um, the, built, the house has been designed so that uh, they can age in place in, within this dwelling. Um, hence, there are. You'll, when we get to it, you'll see that there are five bedrooms proposed in this house because they don't want to move again. As the Ojeda's get older, um, Mario and Viviana most likely will end up um, moving down to the ground floor into what's currently proposed as a guest suite. But I will get to that when I get to the architecture. Uh, the Ojeda's came to us. Uh, met with us. We visited the site before we were retained just to make sure that we were comfortable with that what we were presenting before the board was appropriate for this uh, for this area. Uh, they had done a lot of research on their own, uh, found numerous uh, sample floor plans of house designs that they liked, uh, presented them to us. Uh, I would say in almost all cases, they were larger than what we're proposing here. Uh, because we looked at what they uh, had presented to us. And although they were very beautiful designs, we felt that they were just a little too large to uh, be accommodated on this site. So we, working in conjunction uh, with the Ojeda's, have, I guess, taken a scalpel out uh, to, their, to the design and cut and tweaked it that we think we... Uh, we get a house that, um, although maybe slightly over in coverage on the site, fits in well with the neighborhood. We do meet um, we do meet the front yard and side yard setbacks. And quite frankly, if Montgomery Street were considered the front yard, and as opposed to Evans, the eight foot rear yard setback that I'm encircling with my mouse located at the north side of the property would comply as a side yard, as would the front yard of 25 feet, uh, also facing Montgomery Street. 
And lastly, I would add that the what is being considered a side yard under our application to the east side of this site would be well in excess of the uh, the building envelope for a uh, for a rear yard setback. Um, where you know again, I think it's required to be. I just want to make sure I don't misspeak, so I have to pull out my cheat sheet. And the uh, the rear yard setback being required of 25 feet, and we're uh, nor we're greater than 40 feet in that area over there. So I think that gives you a pretty good sense of the, the overall development of this site. There are site improvements, which I will circle back to, but I'd really like to get into the architecture if the board is okay with that, uh, just to show you how we came up with this building footprint. Uh, yeah, you can certainly go into the architecture, but we, we don't want to spend a lot of time on that. Oh, okay, very good. I will be very brief on that. Thank you. Thank uh, you so, so we have two floor plans. Uh, this was part of your package. This is the ground floor plan. Uh, it's got a garage, a living room, a dining room, a kitchen, and the guest suite and some ancillary spaces over here. Uh, the ground floor area total, or the building footprint area, uh, totals um, 1,768.9 square feet, of which approximately 480 square feet is garage and an open porch over here. Um, there's a patio in the back. And again, these rooms are, the living room is 14 by 19. There is no second family room on this level. So we tried to really tighten up some of those designs that they presented uh, to make this, in our opinion, a reasonable <laughs> application. Uh, there's, as I mentioned, a small guest suite with a toilet, um, private toilet off of the guest suite. On the second floor, there are four bedrooms, which kind of surround an open stairway, uh, an open stairwell and hallway. Again, these bedrooms, um, that would, the first one would be the master suite, which is about 15 by 19 with its own bathroom. And then three bedrooms that are 10 by 14 feet, all with their own closets. Again, not ostentatious but appropriately sized so we can get a bedroom and a dresser and a couple of nightstands in there. So um, we, we were really tried to be diligent and not design a McMansion because that's not the intent of what the Ojeda's came to us for. Uh, quickly on the elevations, this would be the elevation facing Montgomery Street. You can see the two garage doors, the materials, uh, the, the height of the um, proposed dwelling would be 29.1 feet. Uh, that's to the ridge line. Um, we have a hip roof designed over the dwelling. I would point out that the allowable building height in the zone is 35 feet. We're six feet under what the allowable building height is. Um, we created an, what we believe is a, a very nice articulated elevation with a change of materials. We have cast stone surrounds around the garage and porch area. We have a uh, hardy plank siding, uh, and then we have some accent elements of um, stucco. Uh, this would be a, a dwelling that would be designed to meet current building codes. Uh, it would be a very tight thermal envelope and would be a very efficient house uh, from an energy standpoint. Um, it, the appliances would all be um, uh, highly efficient appliances, uh, and um, we would have adequate insulation so that uh, this would, you know, we would be a, a very um, environmentally sensitive uh, dwelling. Um, the side elevation, which is, uh, this is the south elevation facing the neighbor to the south, which is the most proximate dwelling. Again, I, I think the flat elevation, I need to explain a little bit. What I'm encircling here is the area that would be proximate to the dwelling, uh, to, the, uh, to the south. The left third of this elevation is set back 13 feet from this face here. So that garage element uh, that you can see in plan, and I'm gonna toggle back and forth if you don't mind, uh, on the site plan, what I just described was this additional uh, setback of the dwelling, which pulls it farther off that south property line, uh, even though we are compliant with the side yard uh, at eight feet, uh, we wanted to minimize that and quite frankly part of the hardship on this that we were presented with this site is that it is you know fairly narrow so we ended up with a very linear uh, layout to the house 
um, which presented some challenges and kind of uh, contributed uh, from an architectural standpoint to the footprint that we came up with. Um, Mr. Garrett, if I can just uh, if I can just jump in and interrupt one moment. Um, I know that some of the uh, uh, the comments that we had from uh, Mr. Hinterstein's report are directly related to, I think, um, uh, the the look or the design of the building. Um, I know that uh, um, comment number two uh, on Mr. Hinterstein's report indicates that adjacent homes in the area are, per are predominantly modest ranches. Um, in consideration of this, the fact that lot is uh, deficient in lot width, the board should consider lowering the roof line as much as possible. Uh, to bring the scale of the dwelling down. I know that you had done some, um, I guess, sort of reconnaissance as to the neighborhood. I was wondering if we could touch upon that um, in terms of what uh, other homes uh, are and whether this would be a consistent design with that. Okay, I, I was gonna deal with that under planning testimony, but I'll be glad to do it now. So this is an exhibit that is part of the presentation tonight. It was not part of the, um, the application. So I guess we would mark this as A2. A2 mark two as A2. today's date. Okay, great. So we did survey the area. Uh, this is an aerial photograph that we superimposed tax lot numbers onto. And I would uh, point out that there are a number of, uh, there are actually nine dwellings um, in, this, in this area that are over two or two and a half stories are very similar to what uh, what we're proposing. Uh, they would be, and I want to get them properly noted here. Uh, the dwelling here, which is uh, 164 Hamilton Boulevard, uh, is a two and a half story dwelling. I have photographic representation of that when I get to my photo array. Uh, there's this property here along Hamilton Avenue is a two and a half story dwelling. Um, uh, no, not that I apologize. That is not a two and a half story dwelling. Looks like uh, an empty that, lot. Yeah, no, that isn't an empty lot. Actually, there's a house set back there. Well, we can't see it on the picture. Yep. Yeah. Um, the other dwellings in the area here would be, uh, this would be 152 Evans Avenue. This is the subject parcel here, 152 Evans Avenue. I will get to the photograph. In fact, I could toggle over right now. Uh, this would be our photo array coming up. And it may take a moment to load because it's a fairly large file. Oh, that wasn't too long at all. Uh, uh, we'll, uh, just to just to for clarity, we'll mark this as A3, and we'll provide the date as well. Thank you. And I took these photographs myself, and they accurately depict the uh, the existing conditions of the neighborhood. So. For whatever reason, it's not uh, giving me the opportunity to zoom in, so I'm going to try something else. So here, this uh, this is uh, 152 Evans Avenue, and you can see it's a fairly substantial two and a half story dwelling uh, with a roof line, and again, a, a fairly uh, nice uh, facade. There's articulation, there are gables laid in, etc. Um, and then. Uh, in addition to that, along Evans Avenue, a little west of our site, there's a two and a half story dwelling here. Uh, and then there is um, also at 155 Evans, um, there's a two and a half story dwelling that 155 Evans would be. You just bear with me a moment. But you would say the majority of the structures in that area are ranch. I would say uh, in this immediate area, uh, out of the properties we surveyed, I would say three quarters of them are ranch style and okay. uh, one quarter are, you know, two story colonials, raised ranches, that type of design. Okay. Uh, Mr. Thank Garrett, uh, if you could, if you could opine, the, the, the one story ranch houses, um, would it be safe to say that those are some of the older or uh, houses, whereas some of the other ones are possibly some of the, of the newer or more modern homes? Yes, I think the, uh, the the dwelling at 157 Evans is a relatively new dwelling. I would say that the one-story ranches, in my opinion, are circa 1950s, 1960s, um, when that was, you know, very popular size to go up. Um, and but now, you know, we're seeing typically, and it's permitted in the zone, you know, for hot uh, for two and a half stories and up to 35 feet. Um, I would like to just 
shift back to the elevations for a moment uh, because I think it's important to note that, uh, let's see if we can get over here a little bit. If you look here, we are proposing a nine foot floor to floor at the ground floor. That really uh, will provide for an eight foot ceiling on the ground floor. And similarly on the second floor, we're proposing for an eight foot ceiling, we give a top of plate elevation over here. So it's not like we're trying to have 10 foot ceilings or anything like that. We, gave, we, were, we tried to be sensitive in our design <laughs> to, you know, to control the height of the structure. Um, I know the suggestion uh, was made that um, perhaps we could uh, you know, look at changing those, uh, the roof lines and maybe perhaps changing the slopes of the roof uh, in my opinion, uh, both as an architect, uh, well, mainly as an architect, I don't think we can really lower the roof lines any. Uh, we are at the minimum, you know, standard height for living space of eight feet, uh, ceiling heights. And furthermore, we think that the, uh, the slopes that we're proposing, which are in the seven in 12 range, seven units vertically for every 12 units horizontally, is not unreasonable and creates a a much more desirable visual environment uh, on this dwelling. Again, I don't, I'm kind of crossing the line, I'm sorry. Uh, that is a goal and objective of the municipal land use law is to create a, um, you know, a de desirable visual environment. I think it's goal I. Um, and uh, we're, we're trying to do that with the design that we're proposing. And that is, is inclusive of all the articulation and the change in materials that we're proposing on the dwelling. Uh, we think that this would be, uh, we think that in conjunction with the Ojeda's, we've created a, an, ele an elevation uh, both on, the, uh, on all sides, but specifically the south side facing the neighbor and the north side facing Montgomery Street, which are, uh, going to be the most visible um, facades, uh, that we have something that uh, is appropriate and not incongruous with the neighborhood. Uh, I'd also point out, I think it's interesting, uh, and we can, I'm gonna go back to exhibit A2, if you don't mind, uh, the dwelling here on the corner of Evans and, um, and uh, Montgomery Street here, uh, the overall length of that ranch, I'll zoom in a little bit more, is approximately 55 feet. Uh, and our, the, the, the residence that we're proposing in that east-west direction is also 55 feet. Although, as I mentioned, we, uh, we took a big chunk out of it or approximately a third of um, that width out of it at the western end of that. So again, um, it would be very, I, again, I think the architecture does work very well with the, um, with the neighborhood and with the property that's most uh, affected uh, by this application. Um, I just, if you don't mind, would like to, uh, I, uh, the board, I will ask your indulgence to go back to the site plan. I would like to point out that we are proposing stormwater management. There's a set of calculations here. Uh, we have seepage pits in the rear yard here uh, and uh, the yard over here as well as we're proposing to do the driveway and the patio out of pervious pavers. Uh, pervious pavers uh, are um, really encouraged by the uh, state of New Jersey under the stormwater regulations as a way of infiltrating water back into the ground. Uh, it's a best management practice. Uh, and we are controlling all the stormwater that would be generated on our site uh, and not allowing it to flow off the site. So there should be no concerns that there'll be any kind of um, um, additional stormwater during a rainfall that would uh, infringe on any of these adjoining sites. So again, I think that's, um, I, we do have to do that, but we're doing it in a manner that is very green in terms of infrastructure and encouraged by the state. Uh, the, these infiltration beds under these patios um, I've used them uh, several times. They work. The OAA does understand that there's a little more cost for these because it really gets into the bedding underneath the pavers, as well as uh, making sure you know that uh, you properly maintain the pavement. Uh, but 
as with everything, everything needs to be maintained. Okay. Um, can, can I just jump in for a minute? Um, it, you addressed uh, paragraph two of Mr. Hinderstein's report. Maybe it's time to uh, address the rest of his report. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Garrett, if I can, just just because some of these are some of these, I think I can go through pretty quickly. Sure. Um, uh, number one, I think we've touched upon, which is the testimony as to the uh, as to how we came about with the design of the home uh, and why it is that we're asking for this slight uh, increase in the coverage. Number two, I think that we uh, have covered. Uh, number three, the pervious paver detail uh, should be uh, shown. Uh, we will certainly, uh, we can certainly update our plans and we can certainly show that. So we agree to that. Uh, as to for the curbing and sidewalk, I did speak to the uh, the Ojeda's. We are in agreement that we are going to provide the uh, the curbing and sidewalk along the frontages, uh, as well as that uh, the two and a half caliber street uh, trees. Um, uh, so we can certainly uh, uh, address uh, and meet all those uh, those comments and conditions. And in addition, on the DPW report, um, uh, we can uh, certainly uh, show uh, where the location of the utilities and the laterals will be uh, um, prior to any uh, uh, construction. Mr. Anderson, do you have any comments? I, I apologize. Mr. Anderson, did you have any um, comments yeah. to add to this? I mean, again, I really don't have any issues with this. This proposal, I think they've addressed everything. The only problem is, again, is the is the height of the of the structure. Um, you know, I'm not really in agreement with Mr. Garrett as far as that 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 structure cannot be uh, roof height cannot be lower. Again, the home in front is a ranch. There's predominantly ranches, it you know, um, immediately surrounding this home. But the problem is, this is not a conforming lot. If this was a conforming lot, I would be like, this is great. This is a way under what's allowed. Not an issue. The problem is, is you don't have 75 feet. You only have 50 feet. So that that's the issue. Um, we've had several uh, homes developed on 50 foot lots, and and one of the one of the items that the the township uh, legal counsel uh, and um, you know administrations always come back to us to say is if the lot's undersized, we try to maintain a lower roof line um, due to the fact that the lot does not comply with, you know, uh, the lot width. Um, and so sort of following sort of the guides of, of what we've done in the past on predominantly 50 foot lots. And uh, again, there's many cases where we've required, again, that's also where we have area deficiencies. We've required homes to be uh, one story home due to the fact that it's undersized. And I think, I think the ask here is, you know, I understand maybe visually uh it would be you know a little bit nicer to have that 712 seven and a half 12 roof pitch but i easily think that you know the roof pitch here could be 612 it could be brought down slightly the hip could be changed um i'm not telling you you have to take this roof down to match the other roof line but perhaps somewhere in between um just to, to show some compromise and bring it down so that it's just at a little bit lesser scale and that's so it. I, I agree to that. I think uh, I don't see any other, other issues with this uh, application. I think we can certainly reduce the roof slope down to six and 12. I don't think that would have a material effect on the overall design. I would point out, however, and we're, we're willing to do that, uh, but I would point out that the area, the roof line that is closest to Montgomery Street, which is really the one that you're going to read immediately is the garage area that's the one that's 25 feet off and that is a one-story structure we see this elevation really tells the story the second floor is brought back from that area and even the second floor in this area you can see the roof peak here is much lower than the high roof peak uh which is well set back from from montgomery street and evans avenue for that matter yeah. nonetheless we would stipulate you know, or agree to that condition to to change the roof slope down to six and 12. That's, Thank you, uh, Mr. Garrett. Acceptable. Yeah, Mr. Arch, if you're uh, willing to uh, compromise like that, I think we can proceed. If I can just, uh, just out of an abundance of caution, if I can ask uh, my, my clients, the Ojeda's. Absolutely. Um, the only issue that I have is in, is, and again, I'm not an architect, so I'm not, I don't wanna, I don't know if, if specifying that amount before seeing what that would look like uh, is is something that's that's normally done. Uh, so my only ask would be if we could if we could agree that we can modify the roof line to the 
uh, to work with the township and modify it to a satisfactory pitch. I don't know if if on the cuff uh, setting a specific um, uh, pitch amount uh, is is necessarily in everyone's best interest. But okay. again, I'm not an architect. I'm just trying to be overly cautious oh. as an attorney. Henry, are you OK with that proposal? Yeah, I don't have an issue with that. Uh, it's not a varying situation. It's more of a recommendation due to the other size nature of the lot. So uh, I think that's an acceptable condition that they just okay. work it out with us. That's the language you'll use then. Okay, Mr. Arch. Everyone, I can drone on and on and on if you like, but I don't think you want Please to. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> we all have lives to live. Okay. Well, I was a disc jockey. People like my voice. Okay. <laughs> Not after work in twelve hours. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready for uh, I'm ready for the evening to start. So, Mr. Arch, quite honestly, I think I can recommend I can speak for the board when we are willing to um, proceed with this. Uh, excellent. I, I, we have no other uh, uh, testimony. Um, I would just ask Mr. Garrett if he can uh, uh, stop sharing his screen, and then we will. Uh, uh, I'll leave it to you, uh, Mr. Chair, to uh, if there's any Thank questions you. to open it up. I'm sorry, Mr. Arch. I just do need to get one thing on the record. I'm sorry. To, I'm not droning on. I believe the board can grant these variances without causing substantial detriment to the public health, safety, and welfare, nor do I think they will um, cause any substantial impairment of the zone plan. I had to get that on the record, okay? Thank you, sir. Excellent. Any other questions for anyone on the board? For this application and or this witness <clears throat> hearing none i'm going to open it to the public anyone in the public portion have any comments or questions for this application Ms. buckley no one's raising their hand chairman okay close the public portion i'd make a motion to approve this application with the stipulations that our board attorney will be happy to go over right now hope Steve Weiss, the applicant is going to work with uh, the uh, township uh, with regard to the roof height. Perfect. And Steve was a second. Can you read? Uh, yeah. I have a second. You already got somebody. Yeah, Cal Pesh. Come on. <laughs> Steve. Right. Call Mr. Roller. Mr. Weissman. <laughs> yes. Mr. Tillery. Yes. Mr. Patel. Yes. Mr. Reggio. Yes. Mr. Hidaka. Yes. Mr. Minerando? Yes. And Chairman Cahill? Yes. Mr. Arch, we'll memorialize this at our next meeting. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. And great I think evening. you've gained some great new neighbors. Awesome. Thank uh, you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. Oh my God. See you, Thank you. Right. Uh, yes. Move on to item number 11, 21-ZB-76V, Moon Builders, LLC. Mr. Schwartz, are you there? I am. Um, my name is Brian Schwartz. I'm an attorney. I'm representing Moon Builders LLC. Um, Mr. Tom Chung, who just came on, is going to be, um, he's a principal of Moon Builders. He's going to be testifying first. Uh, this is your classic isolated lot where you're probably all even more familiar with it than I am. It's a small lot. It's kind of a leftover lot. Right behind it is another identical lot owned by the township, which apparently is there's no plans on developing it. Um, Tom and I have tried to find the history of this lot, how it ended up being orphaned like this. I haven't had any luck. Uh, Mr. Chung will talk a little bit about what he knows about the history and they can we can explain it. Um, we've contacted the neighbors. They're not interested in either buying or selling. And uh, Mr. Chung has been working with your planning department regarding the size, the mass, the height, the setbacks of the proposed uh, dwelling. And hopefully he has arrived at a, uh, a dwelling that, um, that you will like and that you'll re, uh, recognize as can be accommodated on this property about as well as you can accommodate a, um, a building. We'll also have Mr. Lee Titus testify. I see Lee coming on and um, he will, I never like to insult the board by not going over the statutory criteria. So he will talk about the engineering detail and then quickly go over the statutory criteria for the variances. So unless there's any questions, we'll proceed. Please, please proceed. proceed. Mr. Chung, can you be sworn, please? Mr. Chung, can you raise your right hand? You swear the testimony you're about to give should be the truth. I do. Your name and address, please. Thomas Chung, 1616 Plainfield Ave, South Plainfield, New Jersey, 07. Thank you. Zero, zero. Okay, Mr. Chung, you're one of the principals of Moon Builders, is that correct? 
Yes. And that's a family owned business? Yes. And do you have experience um, in uh, construction of single family dwellings? Yes, I do. In fact, have you bought, have you been involved in constructing houses in Piscataway before this application? Yes, I have. Approximately how many times? Uh, approximately four or five times. Good. All right. Um, tell us what you intend to do on this lot at 30 Stand. Uh, we're intending on building a single family two story home. And basically, we're looking at making it 24 feet wide. And the height of the structure is at 25, 6, which before it was a little bit taller. Uh, because the roof line was a little bit more at 612. So we reduced the roof line to match the rest of the neighborhood at 512 to bring it down. Um, it was also asked to reduce the size of the deck or just remove the whole deck by itself in the back. So we removed it and we just have a little landing out for the back so that they can walk out in the backyard. Um, all right, well, you can stop there. I think you've given enough detail for right now. Um, can I sh uh, share my screen? Um, share screen. Please do. Um, does the board see a picture of a property? No, no we, we do, do not. Do you see my grandchildren? No, <laughs> no we see you. <laughs> That's the, the worst of both worlds. Um, how about now? Okay, something is happening. Blank screen. Okay. Uh, we see a, a picture of a lot. And it says 30 Stanton Avenue on yes, the top? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Excellent. And I've actually figured out how to put um, A1 on it with tonight's date. Um, Thank you. Unfor unfortunately, I haven't figured out how to save that. So I'm going to have to do it manually to uh, give to Ms. Buckley. In any event, um, Mr. Chung, does this show the, the lot? Yes, it's a corner lot. And this is facing from Stanton Avenue, correct? Correct. And to the left, we have Richmond Street, correct? Yes. Which way is your house going to be oriented? It's going to be facing Stanton. Stanton. Okay, so this will be the front yard. Of course, we, we have to deal with two front yards because it's a corner lot, correct? Correct. Now, to the right of this property, um, there's a single family um, uh, neighborhood, correct? Correct. Right. And uh, what kind of houses are they um, in general? In general, they're two-story homes. Right. And are most of the lots, um, well, we'll get into the uh, size of other lots in the area. In the behind your lot, is there another lot as well? Yes, the town owns that lot. And that's identical, correct? Correct. And then to the left, across Richmond Street, there's a, it's a, a, um, a baseball field. Baseball Both fields players. and a public park. Correct. Okay. All right. Next, I'm showing... And I'm going to mark this. Ah, I marked it A3 instead of A2, sorry. A2, um, did, did you put this together? Yes. Is this basically from the tax map? Yes. Okay. But it, it does it show the, um, the other lots around you? Well, the lot 3.01 is our lot. And then the one that was to the right of it's the lot 9.01. And there, most of them are, ba are are conforming, but but to the minimum of conforming, correct? Correct, 100 by 100. And then across the street, you have some that are kind of irregular because of the code set, correct? Correct. And then on the other side of the street, again, you have the park, as you said. Right. Did you or um, Mr. Whitelaw make an effort to find out if, Either of your adjacent property owners were interested in either buying this lot or selling any uh, any portion of their property to you to make your lot more conforming? Yes, we sent out notices to around and we haven't received anything back. Okay, I'm gonna show first, this is a letter from Mr. Whitelaw. Okay, so this is the um, letter to Mr. Fitzpatrick, who lives at 28 Stanton, which is right next to yours, correct? Correct. <laughs> and then Mr. Whitelaw also wrote to the township, right? And this is the letter, again, dated December 1st, Mr. Whitelaw sent to the township? Yes. 
which will be a four. And in fact, he did get a, call, a, um, a letter back from, from the township uh, land use attorney, correct? He got a letter back from Mr. Clarkin saying that they weren't interested in either buying or selling, correct? Correct. But they never, you, you never heard back from the from Mr. Fitzpatrick, did you? No, we haven't. All right, so it's not possible at this time to either buy some additional property to make yours conforming or to um, sell some of your property, correct? Correct. And in fact, when we look back at A2, we see that if you took any property from lot 9.01, you'd make them non-conforming, correct? Correct. And Mr. Schwartz, uh, if I could jump in, I believe you have demonstrated that there is a hardship uh, with regard to uh, the applicant's lot because there's no adjoining area available. Great. All right. We'll go to the next thing. Now, Mr. Um, Mr. Chung, you wanted to talk about what the house is going to look like. So I'm showing you what appear to be elevations. Can you identify what this is? Oh, this is the elevations for... Like it says, the front, the back, uh, the right side, the left side, and the rear. So okay. Um, so again, um, if I'm looking at the top left front elevation, that's going to be facing Stanton. Correct. And the right uh, side elevation. Elevations, Stanton, and then the right side elevations facing towards the other house. The other the, the house next door. The house next door. Correct. Okay. Now, one of the comments we got that caused us to decide not to. Um, come to the board in February was that the mass of the building might be a little bit much. And so the um, town planner was suggesting that you reduce the roof line. Did you do so? Yes, um, we did it with the new set of plans that we have. So it's reduced to 512 for the roof line instead of, as I know it says 612 on the screen, but it was the 512. Okay. And well, all right. And I don't think in the, in the most recent planners uh, report, I didn't see anything about the roof line, so I assume that that's now acceptable to them. I also see in this, um, in the elevations, in the bottom left, it says optional deck. Um, you've eliminated the deck, haven't you? Yes, we have. All right. And you might have a small patio. Uh, there's going to be like a walkout landing for the back of the stair, uh, the back of the sliding door. Okay. But not a deck anymore. It's not a deck anymore, no. Okay. Um, Next one I'm going to show that looks like a floor plan, correct? Correct. Just take me briefly, 25 words or less, take me through the floor plan. Well, the floor plan, when you walk in, it's the living room, and then the stairs to go upstairs and down, and then behind that's the dining room, and then to the right of that's the kitchen, and then in the front is also a one-car garage, and you walk into a laundry room to go into the kitchen, and then next to the laundry room, there's a powder room. All right. Um, there were two other things that were of concern to the township's professionals. One was the setback, and I believe you've done something about that. Well, the setback was from off of Richmond. They were asking for 16 feet, so we're going to reduce it down to, instead of a house being at 26 feet wide, we're going to reduce it down to 24. So Stan, I mean, that's essentially the left side of the house, correct? Correct. And that has the effect of narrowing the house. Is that correct? That's correct. Do you, do you feel that you can build a livable, usable house that's any more narrow than that? In other words, um, if you went to make that setback even more than 16 feet, would you still have a livable house? Um, then it's going to get a little tighter. I feel like if we go a little more than 16 feet. I okay. Feel you feel 16 is really the, a reasonable compromise of what you think you can do with I still have a house that can be used by a family. Correct. All right. And so we talked about the roof. We talked about the um, doing away with the deck. Um, are there any other changes you made from the plans from when you originally uh, submitted them? Um, the only other thing that we did uh, change was the garage. Uh, ah, thank you. Yeah, now, the garage, the requirement is that it needs to be 12 by 20. Uh, apparently, that's still showing up in the professional's reports. Um, I think you thought that you made it compliant. Yes, which we will, when we submit the plans, we'll have it compliant with the 12 by 20. All right. Okay, you can do that. 
Buenas noches. All right, I have no other questions. Thank you. Awesome. Anyone else on the board have any questions or comments for this witness? Okay. Hearing none, anyone in the public portion have any questions or comments? I, I believe they might have another uh, another witness. Y'all gonna go with the planner afterwards, right? Uh, yes. Okay, yeah, so I'll, I'll leave the comments for um, after that then. Uh, please um, put your planner on. Okay, Mr. Titus, are you Mr. there? Mr. Titus, could you raise your right hand? Mm -hmm. The testimony you're about to give should be the truth. Yes, it is. Thank you. Your name and address, please. W. Leland Titus, 618 Somerset Street in North Plainfield. Uh, Mr. Titus, you're a principal in the firm of, um, of Titus Surveying and Engineering? Yes, I am. And is it accurate to say that you're both a professional engineer and a professional planner? That's correct. Do you hold licenses in each discipline in the state of New Jersey? I do. And they're both. Uh, can I just jump in here? Uh, Mr. Titus, I believe you have appeared as an expert before the Piscataway Zoning Board on prior occasions. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, uh, thank if you. If your licenses are in, still in good condition, then uh, I think we can accept you as an engineer and planner. Good, I, I just just renewed it recently, so I'm in good shape. <laughs> and did right. you check clear? Did you check clear? I used a credit <laughs> card. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Lee, I put up in front of the board what looks to me like to be um, uh, engineering plans that say Titus Surveying and Engineering. And can you identify what this is? It is um, several several different views of the property. On the left is the existing conditions as the property is now with no house. In the middle is the proposed conditions, which show where the house would be located and where the driveway would be located. To the right of that is um, an area map that you looked at kind of, um, Tom yeah. went over that. Yes. And then there's a key map and several tables with the zoning um, requirements. Okay, I, I've already, um described, I think, most of the variances I haven't mentioned. Of course, there's a lot of area variance and there's a, there's a width, a lot width variance as well. Is that correct? There's a variance um, for lot width. The lot width is required to be 100 feet and this is a 50 foot lot width and um, 10,000 square feet in area is required and this lot would be 5,000 square feet. All right, first of all, since you're an engineer, tell me about basically about this property from an engineering standpoint, whether there's any, any engineering controls that are necessary or any engineering uh, uh, characteristics to it. The uh, property has fronts on two streets, Stanton Avenue and Richmond Avenue, and there is a drainage system in um, Stanton Avenue. Um, it slopes basically towards Stanton Avenue, but there is a little part of the property that slopes towards Richmond Avenue. <coughs> and that condition would be maintained when the uh, proposed house is constructed. The only difference is the roof leaders from the proposed house would tie into the existing drainage system in Stanton Avenue. Okay, are there any other engineering controls that you see are necessary? No, sir. Where's, where's water gonna drain from the house and from the roof? The water from the roof will go through downspouts and into piping and be conducted into the um, stormwater system in Stanton Avenue. Okay. Anything else you need to say about the property from an engineering standpoint? No, it's pretty, it's pretty basic. Okay, then um, let's talk about your, um, your planning testimony. You've already heard that there was no... Um, no ability to either sell some of the property or buy more property. And you already listed the variances other than there's also a variance for a slight variance for maximum building coverage. Is that accurate? It's 20.3 as opposed to 20. But that will go away when we reduce the size of the house. That, okay. that was going to be one of my questions. So that will no longer be a variance. If you maintain the setback at 16 feet by narrowing the house. That's correct. Thank you. All right. And you also heard that Mr. Chung says that if he's not, if the garage is not compliant now, he will make it compliant. I, I heard that. Yes. All right. Yes. So the variances we're dealing with are lot area, uh, lot width, front yard setback. 
and lot frontage, correct? That's correct. All right. Um, and, and obviously, we know this is an isolated lot and, and it's a, a small lot. Um, are you familiar with the statutory criteria for granting uh, C or bulk variances such as this? Yes, I am. Do you have an opinion as to whether the proposed uh, size of the dwelling and the, uh, uh, the dimensional characteristics of it are appropriate for this lot? They, they are appropriate. Now, are you familiar with the other houses in the neighborhood? Somewhat. Uh, is this house going to be compatible with the other homes in the neighborhood? Generally speaking, that's correct. Do you agree with Mr. Chung that it would not really be feasible from a standpoint of, of livability to make the house any smaller to try to maximize any further the setbacks? That would be getting somewhat narrow and it would also start to look odd from the streets being very narrow. And would it, would it make any difference from a planning standpoint to further reduce the size or the dimensions of the, uh, of the proposed house? I don't see any reason for that. Do you have an opinion as to whether the variances that are remaining um, can be granted by reason of narrowness, shallowness, or shape of the property or exceptional uh, uh, physical features or extraordinary exceptional situation affecting a piece of property? Do you have an opinion about that? I, I believe these variances could be granted. Okay. The other uh, kind of variance that we talk about is a C2 or flexible C, um, as my friend Dan Bernstein used to call it. And it talks about the benefits outweighing the detriments. Do you have an opinion about that? Um, well, it's, it, it encourages an appropriate use of the property to promote the general welfare, and it provides adequate um, light, air, and open space, and it uh, promotes the establishment of appropriate population density that will contribute to the well-being of the neighborhood and it promotes a desirable visual environment. Um, you, you mentioned light, air, and open space. I think that was um, one of the comments from the planning department in the, um, in the township. So you do believe that it, um, it um, satisfies that requirement? Well, as far as, as, far as um, looking at it from, from the uh, property on the uh, right, which is the property on the north, the, the, the side yard is, is as required by the zoning ordinance. And as far as the property in the rear, it's close to the zoning ordinance. And then on either of the other two sides are both are both right of ways. You, you've kind of gone into the negative criteria, which I was going to ask you next, next about um, whether the variances can be granted without substantial detriment to the public good and without substantially impairing the intent and purpose of the zone plan zoning ordinance. Do you have an opinion as to whether this application with the variances satisfies the negative criteria? Yes, I do. It satisfies the negative criteria. It's consistent with the zone plan. It's not going to detract from the neighborhood. That's correct. All right, I have no other questions. Thank you, Mr. Titus. Any other members of the board have any questions or comments for this uh, witness? Hearing none, I'm going to open it up to the public for any comments and questions. Ms. Buckley. Uh, Mr. Swick, can you unshare your screen, please? Thank you. Yes, we have a Mr. Fitzpatrick. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Mr. Fitzpatrick, could you unmute yourself and raise your right hand? Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give should be the truth? Yes, I do. Your name and address, please. <laughs> Chris Fitzpatrick, 28 Staunton Avenue, Piscataway, New Jersey. Thank you. Go ahead with your question or comment. Uh, at the comments, I mean, this is a lot 50 by 50. And a you lot know, 50 you, by 100. Oh, sorry, 50 by 100. Yeah, the house. Okay. Um, the 50 foot side, uh, you've got to meet a 35 foot setback from Richmond Street. And then if you go to the other side of the house, you'd need 10 foot. So add them up, 35 and 10 is 45, which means if you're to build a house in accordance with the zoning ordinance, you really would not be able to build a house on that lot. Now, um, that's a corner lot and you need a setback at 35 feet on two streets. You know, you need Richmond and you need Staunton. And the thing about this lot is, it's a lot at a park setting here where you've got children. Now the, Reason for the 35 feet 
is that if I'm driving down the street coming up to the intersection, I can see traffic on the other street. That's basically why I need that 35 feet setback. So here we have a park setting with uh, kids playing ball. When you go by there on the weekend, you can't get a parking spot. Uh, cars are parked on uh, all around the ballpark and on the side streets. And you've got mothers and kids uh, uh, loading, unloading and stuff. And I can see that, you know, what you've, what you've done here is kind of introduce a safety hazard because um, as the lady or housewife pulls up to the intersection, she's distracted by the other stuff. And I don't have the 35 feet. I'm looking at 14 to 16 feet. So I've really cut down on the view that I can have on that other street when I pull up to the intersection. So really, I kind of see it as a safety hazard. And if you build that house on that lot, then you really have caused a safety hazard that you can't mitigate. In other words, later on, if you wanted to do something about it, you really can't. And that's, that's one of the comments I have. Uh, the other one is, you know, it's a 50 foot lot and you're putting a small house on this 50 foot lot and the visual Im impact is not good. And it, it does affect the character of the neighborhood and not in a good way. Um, the houses all around that area and including that block are all 100 by 100 lots. And uh, the houses that are on that particular block, I think were built by moon builders, but um, they're spaced out properly. They all meet the requirements. And uh, uh, putting a house on this lot is squeezing it in to a small area. And I don't think it is a good, I don't think it, it, it will be a good lot, a good look for the, for, for, uh, for the area. Um, I got other issues with that too and drainage. You know, when they build a house, they come in, they dig out the basement, they build the house, then they backfill. Now I live next door and the water from my house drains onto that property. And usually what happens in the end, they just backfill and bring up the level so they don't have to haul away the dirt and stuff. So that was another issue I had. And uh, building that house so, so close to me, it's like um, you're taking the sun away from my backyard. So um, pretty much there are all my comments. Thank you for your testimony tonight, sir. Yes. Ms. Buckley, any other hands raised? No, Chairman. Hearing none, Hello. public for Hello. 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 Wow. Mm -hmm. okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry. Um, I probably didn't do it right, but um, <laughs> my name is Richard David, and I live on Susan Court across the street from the hey, house. Mr. David, I, Mr. David, hold on. I need to swear you in. Could you raise your right hand? Okay. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give should be the truth? Yes. Okay, we got your name. I need your uh, your your address. My address is one Susan Court. Thank you. Please proceed with your comment or question. Um, my only comments are from an aesthetic point of view. I live at one Susan Court. I've been in that house for 47 years. Every other house in that neighborhood is on a 100 by 100 lot. And I just think that putting a house on that half size lot is going to aesthetically degrade the neighborhood. I'm not an engineer, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an architect like all these other people. And I heard some of them comment that it's not going to aesthetically harm the neighborhood. And I strongly disagree as somebody who's been there for 47 years and every other house on that street and in that neighborhood meets the lot size requirement. And I just think it's wrong to put a house there. Thank you, Mr. David. Ms. Buckley, anyone else? None that I see. Okay, public portion's closed. Um, being on the zoning board for say, 17 years now, um, you, you, anytime new property is being built, you always have neighbors coming out concerned about what it's gonna look like and the detriment to the neighborhood. And, I can tell you out of 100 instances, 99 of them 
uh, go on to be, you know, happy ever after type situations. So I can appreciate the neighbors coming out and being concerned, um, but there are other issues that are factoring into this. And um, I would offer uh, to approve the application and I'm looking for a second. Out of second. Thank you, Kyle Fish. Ms. Buckley, call the roll. Mr. Weissman? Yes. Mr. Tillery? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Patel? Yes. Mr. Reggio? Yes. Mr. Haydaka? Yes. Mr. Medorano? <clears throat> yes. And Chairman Cahill? Yes. Mr. Schwartz, you, your, your application satisfied the legal requirements for an approval, and we will memorialize it in a document at our next meeting and send it to you. Thank you very much, and thank you for your cooperation and courtesies. Have a good evening. Have a good night. All right, we're at item number six. Uh, no. Bala, no. I'm reading the wrong one. There's two number sixes. Oh, okay. I'm showing Supermania. Yeah. yeah. It is Bala. Supermania. It should be 12, right? Yep, yeah, should be 11. Yes, 12. Should be 12. I'm I sorry, I'm, re I'm reading it off the, an email. Um, Laura, what no, is that? 21 dash CB dash 43V? Yes. Okay. 14 Walt that's, Haven Court. That's it. Is Bala hey. Subramanian here? Yes, I'm here. Mr. Subramanian, uh, I need to swear you in. Could you raise your right hand? Sure. You swear the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth. Yes, sir. Your name and address, please. Bala Subramanian, 14 Walt Haven Court, this Caribbean, New Jersey. Okay, the last time you were here, um, we asked you to file an amended application. You have not done so. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Why did you not uh, file an amended application? Uh, I talked to Laura and asked her that if we, for the, the zone, if the bond is not, if the exit structure is not used for anything special, just use the normal stuff, then do I need, still need a file? And she said, no. Then I said, okay, in that case, we're just going to use it as such. That's why I didn't file it. Okay. Based upon information that you have told to some of your neighbors, um, you may have a use variance issue, um, but the board can't deal with that because you haven't filed that, that application and you have not paid the fees necessary for that. That said, you have an application before the board uh, with regard to certain variances, not use variances, with regard to accessory structures on your property. Um, please provide the board uh, with the proofs uh, for the variances that you're seeking. Uh, it's a bulk variance that I applied for and that application's already, I filed with a uh, township. That's already there. It should be there in the files. Yes, uh, pl please give the board the reasons, uh, what, what you're seeking here. I'm seeking two things. One is uh, this property, I uh, submitted all the proper deeds, the legal deeds that through which this transfer is done. And so I'm seeking it that I just want to rebuild and repair the structure and I want it to be grandfathered. Okay, uh, you have not filed an application for a non-conforming use. So you can't ask the board to grandfather these structures. You have filed a variance application. Right, I'm not using it for anything non-conforming use. I'm just gonna use it for storage, that's all. Sir, I, I, it, a non-conforming use means a building that was there before the township zoning code was adopted. That's not the application that you have filed. Okay, I didn't understand that. So let me go back and uh, file that application. That's uh, what's all up there. Can we postpone this? Is that what we do? Adjourn it? If the applicant is asking to file an amended application, which is what we asked him to do last month, mm -hmm. it, it is up to the board whether or not you would like to grant that adjournment. Is that what you're asking, Mr. Submarine? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Laura would. This will be the last time, right? You'll have all your ducks in order ready to go. I mean, I don't know if you want to open it to the public because there are people that email me on a regular basis about this. I don't know if you want to do that or you want to. Well, wait there's no, there's no testimony that yeah, was proffered. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I would ask, um, in the interest of both the applicant and this board, that those individuals um, come back when the applicant comes before us with legitimate testimony, and they can make their comments and and uh, statements about it at that time. Okay. And Mr. Uh, Subaranian, you will need an extension of time. And so I will send you an email. Say again, sorry. You need an extension of time. You're out of time again. Yeah. So another yes. check for $25. I'll email you to that in the morning. Okay. So I, I suggest maybe the second meeting in April. April 28th. Okay. Mr. Thank Subramanian, you. Is April 28th acceptable? Uh, Yes, sir. Okay, now you are going to have to send out new notices because you're amending your application to propose something that you did not propose originally. So you will have to re-notice. Okay. And I would ask those individuals that are uh, neighbors that wanted to make comments tonight, uh, please come back on April 28th when you can comment and make statements about actual testimony um, that has been proffered by the applicant. And thank you for staying this long to uh, to try and uh, make some uh, issue with it tonight. Thank you. Okay. Let's move on to item number. Well, I'm afraid now at this point. Is this number thir I don't 13? Know. Is adoption of resolutions? Sounds good. Okay. Adoption of resolutions. From the regular meeting of February 24th. Uh, the resolution of JSM at Centennial LLC. Uh, this is an application for interpretation which you approved as a permitted use. Mr. Weissman? Uh, I can't hear. What? Yeah. That was a little broken. You're cutting out. in and out, Jim. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Weissman? Yes. Mr. Tillery? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Mr. Hiduka? Yes. Mr. Minerando? Yes. Mr. Ali? Yes. Mr. K Chairman Cahill. Yes. That's the only resolution for this evening. Okay. Uh, item number 14, adoption of minutes from the regular meeting of February 24th. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, honor a uh, motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out as always. Appreciate your sacrifice. Have a great thank night. You. Good night. Thank, thank you. Bye, everyone.